Do you know what makes the ingredients kappa carrageenan and locust bean gum work so well together? Well, today on WTF, we're going to cover the topic of synergies and how kappa carrageenan and locust bean gum can be used to make an amazing ramen inspired deviled egg. Hello and welcome to WTF, where we transform food here in the Modernist Pantry Test Kitchen. I'm Chef Scott Guerin. And I'm Janie Wang, one of the owners of Modernist Pantry. And here on WTF, every week we talk about unique ingredients and techniques and show you recipes for your kitchen. So remember to subscribe and also stick around for our weekly giveaway. This week, we are continuing our functional ingredient series by talking about the synergy between kappa carrageenan and locust bean gum. And the reason why we wanted to talk about it is because we haven't really covered synergies at all here on WTF and people were asking about them so we thought we'd pick two popular ones that work really well together and talk about you know like really what's happening how do you use it and of course we have a recipe for you. I think Scott where we want to start today is really with the basics for people who haven't maybe seen the some of the other gum episodes um, to talk about what is kappa garaginin and what is locust bean gum first of all. Sure, so kappa carrageenan is a gelling agent. Uh, it creates a clear, brittle gel. That's mm -hmm. what it, it makes. Uh, locust bean gum is a gum that's derived from the locust bean or the carob bean, uh, and it's used for thickening, and it's, for some reason, loves other ingredients. Mm -hmm. So it has synergies with, uh, you know, not just kappa, but agar and xanthan. So it, it, it works well with others. Kind, okay. of, kind of a good way to think about it. But when you add it, it doesn't just, you know, mix in and, and do its own thing. It really, you know, almost connects to the kappa and creates a new type of gel. Yeah, and I think when we talk about synergy, um, what exactly is the benefit of using the two ingredients together versus just apart or, you know, with one of the many other gelling agents that we happen to offer? Yeah, so what it does is it will, you know, pretty much link onto the backbone of kappa is what it's described as, and it will then turn that brittle uh, clear gel into a, a clear and elastic gel. Mm -hmm. So we're able to get a little bit more stretch, we can do a lot more things, we can manipulate it, as you'll see with the recipe that we do here today. Uh, we're able to make a noodle that can then spiral and not, you know, almost shatter every time we bend it. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's actually a really amazing, you know, connection between these two, and it works in similar ways with other things as well. Uh, but yeah, it, it just, you know, one plus one equals three, when they come together, you get cool. something brand new almost. Yeah, I think most people might not be aware of, but you know, when we talk about um, plant-based gelling agents, a lot of times you're either dealing with elasticity mm -hmm. or clarity, but not yes. often both. And which leads me to my follow-up question, which is we always get people say, okay, I want to use them together. Uh, how much do I use of each? <laughs> That's, yeah. That's like almost an impossible, you know, mm -hmm. task because every recipe is different. But the best thing is, uh, we, we set up a little demo here is to show you how much, you know, will give you what result. Okay. So, so uh, for the left side of the camera, for everyone who's watching, we have the clearest gel. And All that, right, that's, this one right here? Yeah, that's the, right. just the pure cap, a 100% cap. You can see super cool. clear. Mm -hmm. uh, and it maintains its clarity through the majority of these. The mm -hmm. further you get down the line to where you see this pool that is 100% locust bean gum. I'm not picking that up. Yeah, you, yeah. you, you yeah. literally can't. Yeah, so it is a gum, mm -hmm. it is a thickener, even after it's heated and everything, mm -hmm. that's what you end up with. Okay. Unless a gelling agent's added. So the next one right next to it, which gives us the most stretch, the most elasticity, mm -hmm. is 90% uh, locust bean and only 10% kappa. Right. So you have the ability to pick Ooh. it up. It stretches, these are all the same length when they were cut, but wow. you can stretch them uh, and get different things. So what it's we almost ended up, like slime. Yeah, mm -hmm. what we ended up with our recipe was a 50-50 uh, kappa to locust bean gum. So that's about here on this. So you get a bit of stretch, you get a bit of pliability, you get a little bit of movement, and you're not having to worry about if it bends, it will you know pretty much snap in your hands. Right. So you so can you definitely can feel. I mean, at least I can definitely feel the difference between each of these that I'm. You know, yeah, especially if you pick up that them. first one. If you even if just give it a bend for for the people to see, it it's will very. St I'm, I'm more, like I don't want to pick it up. You can all lift the way. that up pretty right. easy, but if you bend it, then you're going to end up with a split. Yeah, yeah I mean <laughs> our, our cap is very nice, but mm -hmm. if I were to bend it, oh, it's 
Oh, I definitely cannot pull it. Like, mm. it is going, yeah. See how it tears like that? So if I pull it. Wait, you hold nice. that one. I want to grab this one. Because I, I think this is kind of Try really and pull very, that one, and yeah. you'll see how elastic. Whoa. Right. This one's all, yeah, it's like kind of they were of the like same a size. So, so, yeah, you get much more elasticity, so you're able to cool. do more things out of it. Oh, I'm stretching it out even further. <laughs> <laughs> and as it goes down the line, you're going to end up with, you know, um, a little bit more opacity. It's not going to be able to, you know, you won't be able to see through it as perfectly, uh, but that's just because locust bean gum is being added to it. But you still have clarity through the majority of these. And if you were to make something yeah. like the noodle we're making, absolutely, you're going to see through it. Yeah, I think when you look at, I mean, definitely you're not going to get this level of clarity. Even when you get to this 20%, it's starting to get cloudy right yep. here. Exactly. Um, but I think, to, you know, to answer the people's question where I was like, how much do I use of what? I think the answer is it depends, right? Mm -hmm. Like, what are you trying to do with your recipe? Everyone's going to be different. Yeah, it's how much elasticity do you need versus how much clarity mm -hmm. do you need? And then also what else is in there, you know? Yep. But hopefully what we've shown you in this little display here is just kind of the range that you can possibly get. And that way, if you are trying to decide, you might be like, oh, I'm looking for something really stretchy. That means like more locust bean gum. Um, yeah. It's and just this only shows point. you pretty much 10. So mm -hmm. so we can go through and we, we can break it down you know, even further. And, you know, a 100 point scale, if it wanted 15 and, and uh, you know, 85, then you could have maybe a little, a little bit more elasticity or a little bit less. It really depends on your recipe. But this is a great way to look at it and go, oh, I, I definitely want it to be super stretchy, but I want mm -hmm. it to be a gel. Let's go with that 90 and 10. And then we'll be able to go, mm -hmm. you know, and, and figure out your recipe from there. But yeah. there is no exact ratio it's up to you yep so that's a really good point and i know we're about to dive into the demo yep. but first of course i wanted to talk about the giveaway which will be a bag of the kappa a bag of the locust bean gum so you can start playing around with them and see what you can do with it and in order to enter to win leave in the comments below um something else you'd like to see us tackle on the functional series so this series is really just focused very specifically on explaining the ingredients a little bit more diving deeper but let us know what you are interested in. Sure. All right, what recipe are we showing off today? So we're gonna show one of our favorite recipes. It's our mm -hmm. uh, kind of like a ramen deviled egg. So we, we take a, a tea egg, that a soft tea egg, we put a, a gelled ramen broth on top, Ooh. and then we put a mushroom noodle around it. So you get all those flavors of a, of a nice ramen. You even get a noodle in there, but it's in a deviled egg form. So Very it's cool. a really cool one. Uh, so first we have to get this mushroom liquid going. So this is just mushrooms heated over a low flame until they purge their liquid. So this is pure essence of mushrooms. <laughs> so basically what I have here is I have my kappa and I have my locust bean gum. And I'm just gonna gently mix them together and I'm gonna be using a hand blender today, so uh, I don't have to worry about too much about you know putting this in, into a blender itself and blending it at high speeds. But I'm gonna get this going, and I'm gonna just gently sprinkle this in until it's all incorporated. Mm. It'll definitely thicken up. There we go. So once this is added in, I'm just gonna go until I know it's all mixed and begin heating it. All right, and can you remind people who are watching the, the heating point that you need to get this to in order to activate the gums? Sure, so 180 degrees is gonna be the lowest you can get to to make sure it's completely activated. Uh, I just bring it up to a boil. It, once it's at a boil, it's going to be, uh, you know, you know it's activated and it's not gonna lose. I know some people ask, well, if I boil it, won't it lose moisture, mm -hmm. right? If I boil it for a second and I pull it off, it's gonna be completely fine. I'm not gonna to have to worry about losing any moisture. If you boil rapidly for a long period of time, yes, because then your ratio of water to, to gums and, and jelly right. agent change. Hmm. But once I bring it up to a boil, I can stop. And maybe it's lost at most a gram of liquid. But okay, cool. So once this comes up to a boil, those bubbles will go away. We're going to then draw it into this, uh, this noodle maker which is just uh, some tubing added on to one of our perfect caviar makers and it's going to then set inside of here okay so once we pull it in we're going to give it about you know two or three minutes it'll cool down and it'll set inside here and then we're able to extrude it out uh onto mm. the table so you'll be able to see that yeah that juice smells amazing it just <laughs> smells like uh, like mushroom it is pure mushroom yeah. essence. Mm. so Feels while we're great. waiting for that we can get our egg onto our little plate here. And you can do much more than one of these, but 
for demo purposes, we'll have one. So I have the soft egg and I put just the gel over the top so it almost mimics the other side of the yolk. Right. Okay, and what's in this little, and what's in the sphere here? So in the sphere is just ramen broth, but I can show you how quickly this is already up to a boil. Okay. So I'm just gonna make sure that this is completely mixed around. I wanna make sure the entire liquid nice is Nice catch, that was about to boil over. <laughs> mm. I made a lot of mistakes. Mm. I know how to fix. So I'm gonna let that cool down for just a okay. second. But yeah, so the other side of that sphere mm -hmm. is uh, ramen broth that we've added a little bit of gelatin to. Mm -hmm. So we make a super rich, super flavorful ramen broth, add some gelatin, set it into a mold, and then we're able to take it out and place it on there. So when you get it, you get a big burst of flavor, mm -hmm. right? So it's almost like over flavored if you were to have it for uh, a, like a ramen, but when you eat it like this, it melts in your mouth and you get like this big punch of flavor. So it feels like you're eating cool. a nice bowl of ramen. So here's the fun part. I'm going to take this, and get a bunch of that noodle on screen so we can see. And when I pull it in, I don't want to fill up my caviar maker. Right, because you're just filling up the tubing. Yes. Okay. Once it comes out, I'm just going to let this sit for a second. I can put that back in, but I'm just going to let this sit for just a moment. Sadly, we already did the giveaway, so now we have to wait. Okay. So let's just come back in just a minute, and then we'll be able to kind of extrude this out. Cool. All right, so now we can extrude this noodle out. I'm just going to apply pressure. There we go. Whoa. You know, that's something I never get tired of seeing. <laughs> it's pretty amazing, right? Mm -hmm. It's so simple, but you can make these noodles out of just about anything. But you get this beautiful, long noodle that then we can use to wrap around. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to take it and then just guide it around the top. Now this is definitely a, mm. a make-ahead type of recipe. So if you were going to do this for a party, and we have done this for a party before. Yes, and it was delicious. Everybody loved it. I'm going to make sure that it's as tight as possible. I would say the technique is really simple, but what Scott's doing here is like a little bit of chefy presentation. Yeah. I'm trying not to pull it. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so you could take that noodle and Ooh. float it into a nice sauce. Mm -hmm. And then we just garnish that top because it's very hard to get it to coil all the way to the top. So we just garnish it. A few scallions, not too many, just two. Yeah, the kind of the cool thing about this, I know a lot of people have been using our ingredients to make, um, to make like keto noodles. This would be like, I bet somebody can make a great keto noodle with this Yeah, too. you probably could make a good keto mm. noodle with this. I think uh, it would be delicate just because it's so thin. Yeah. But that clarity, and you could definitely put it into like, mm. uh, you know, a cold soup or gazpacho would be really cool Ooh, with this, you know, yes. with like a, mm. either a pepper noodle or something, right? You could put it in there and have like just yes. a little bit of texture but also that nice gazpacho yeah. flavor. So. And speaking of cool soup, can you talk a little bit about whether this gel that we just made is a thermal reversible? So yes, this is a thermal reversible mm -hmm. gel, which means I can heat this back up and this will turn back into a liquid. So if you made this ahead of time, put it into the refrigerator, brought it back out the next day, heated it up gently, mm -hmm. it'll just turn back into a, uh, a liquid and I can continue making noodles. Very cool. All right, I'm going to eat this egg. So this is actually, I will say, like, you know, one of my favorite recipes that we've ever made in the test kitchen. Mine too. So it's delicious. Uh, I'm going to make a mess of this. I'm going to take this. Um, I know. I'm going to take this whole plate. Oh, but look at uh, that. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right. But it's, mm. it's kind of a one bite thing, so. Just like a deviled egg. Mm -hmm. So you get that flavor. The tea egg is extremely flavorful on the outside. That ramen broth will melt right away. That uh, mm. mushroom noodle is just packed full of flavor because it's pure mushrooms and then you get uh, a little bit of that scallion for freshness and boom, ramen egg. Yeah, oh, so good. I got, I can eat like a dozen of these. <laughs> just eat six eggs in one day. Oh, but they, this is really good. Hopefully we've given you a new recipe that you can try that's delicious and fun. Some ideas around what you can do with kappa and locust bean gum and let us know what else you would like to see.
So until next week, from here in a modernist pantry test kitchen, I'm Janie Wang. And I'm Scott Gary.